There is this man who owns a bus touring company. His name is Buddy, and he is such an asshole. If you're watching this, I can't stand you, and I hope your business burns. You are so disrespectful and so misogynistic. I hate you. Ah, yeah, fuck you, Buddy. So the bus is still running. <laughs> As the ancient saying goes, when one it girl rises, the old one fades away, and I feel like we're beginning to approach that cycle with Renee Rapp. If you've been on social media this week, you'll notice that she has kind of been everywhere, and that's because she has been doing more press for Mean Girls, the musical, the movie, which came out a couple days ago. And to put it simply, the more Renee talks, the more people are starting to pick up on some unique things about her. She seems to always say the first thing that comes to mind, she is unapologetic queer, and people have pointed out that she seems to have a lack of what's called media training, a style of communication in which celebrities are taught to interact with the press, especially when they're promoting some kind of movie or television show. And in the modern day digital age where inauthenticity is the product and unachievable status is what's being marketed to us constantly, Renee's no bullshit attitude is kind of refreshing. Here's the thing though, I fear this will inevitably backfire on her because it always does, and she will get eaten alive by the online mob. It's it's a phenomenon, I've coined the curse of the it girl, we've been here before, and we will certainly be here once again. And before I dive into my main hypothesis here, I did want to let you know that I have updated all of my social media links with this beautiful link tree that you can find in the description down below. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Letterboxd, I'm on Instagram and TikTok, I have a second channel where I do vlogs and Q&As and stuff, and I also have a Patreon where you can subscribe for just $2 a month to get bonus exclusive weekly content. Thanks so much. In case you haven't already guessed, Renee Rapp started out as a theater kid. The clip you're watching now is of Renee performing at the Jimmy Awards in New York City back in 2018. After performing this number, she ended up beating out 40 other competitors for a $10,000 scholarship. With actress Laura Benanti, who presented the award to Renee, saying, I will never be as confident as that 18 year old. <laughs> <laughs> That confidence, in addition to Renee's undeniable vocal talent, springboarded her to Broadway. She joined the cast of Mean Girls on Broadway in 2019, portraying the role of Regina George, who she went on to play in the eventual movie adaptation of the musical. That musical was only on Broadway for a very short time, it closed during COVID and did not open back up once Broadway opened back up, which is what led Renee on to her next project, which is what I primarily know her from, starring as Layton in Mindy Kaling's popular HBO Max original series, The Sex Lives of College Girls. At first glance, Layton is definitely a Regina George-esque character. She's first presented in the series as a wealthy legacy college kid who believes herself to be above her more down-to-earth roommates who she happens to accidentally get paired in a college dorm with. But over time, we the audience begin to warm up to Layton as a character because she eventually does become friends with her other roommates and the bond is very charming and fun to watch. Additionally, we get another layer of character depth as Layton is a lesbian and goes through various identity-related struggles over the course of the two seasons. It's also worth noting here that Layton's struggles align to Renee's experience in real life because Renee identifies as bisexual and has talked about the challenges of playing a gay character on a TV show by explaining that she felt that her taking the role was invalidating to the character because she didn't feel gay enough. However, Renee has gone on to say that playing Layton did change her life and that she's super grateful to bring that representation on screen and that she's learned more about herself and her own identity through portraying that character. In July of last year, it was announced that Renee would be leaving the sex lives of college girls, taking a very minimal role in season three before exiting the series altogether. The reason given around that time was that she wanted to focus more on her music. And we got a little bit more information about that decision in a profile in the cut that came out in August of 2023. And I remember at the time this whole profile and interview with Renee wasn't received super well. 
But honestly, I think a lot of that at first had to do with the fact that Renee was leaving the Sex Lives of College Girls pretty early because it only had two seasons and that, you know, kind of rubbed fans the wrong way. And I think the other thing that turned people off to this specific profile and the way she comes off in it is the sort of pretentious style that it's written in, which inadvertently makes the subject of these profiles often come off more aloof and pretentious and disconnected. Let me explain what I mean here in a very specific way. If you see a sentence like this in one of these entertainment culture profiles, where the journalist inserts themselves by explaining where they are where the interview is taking place, like, we're on a discreet hotel patio yards away from the beach. Like, you're just in for the most pretentious seven to eight minutes of reading you ever will consume in your entire life. Down with the self-involved celebrity profile. If you're a journalist, don't insert yourself in your own shit. Anyway, in this profile, Renee expresses that her primary desire in the entertainment world is to create create music. A singular goal that seems to have conflicted with her responsibilities over at Max. For example, planning her own music tour without getting permission from the showrunners. She also tells the story about how she negotiated with Lauren Michaels and Tina Fey over her role in the Mean Girls movie. Apparently telling them something to the effect of, I was like, I know you motherfuckers do SNL, so I will do it if you agree to help me with my music career for the rest of my life. Renee and the interviewer then go on to talk a little bit more about her love life, her sexuality, and how those two things inform her music. And then we get to the end of the profile, which features a quote that I think embodies Renee's whole personality and why people are currently responding to it so well. It's not that I don't care, she says. I don't even give a fuck how I acted in that fucking episode of that show or that movie or whatever. It's going to be what it will fucking be. Like when Mean Girls comes out, it will be what it fucking is. The only fucks she gives now are about her music. Those are the fucks that I love, she says. And it did kind of work. She came into Hollywood with the singular goal of being a pop star and getting her music out into the world. And she debuted her first full length pop album called Snow Angel back last year. And I actually think it's one of the more underrated albums that came out in 2023. It's just a really solid, well-produced pop album. It shows off her vocal range. There are lyrics on it that actually show off her very unique personality. Like in Tummy Hurts, which is probably one of the most popular songs from the album. She says the line, I just want some recognition for having good tits and a big heart and like, that's a great line. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, people have had the chance to see more of that personality on display now that she's doing a lot of press for the Mean Girls film. One of the clips that of course went the most viral is the one that I played in the beginning of this video where she's cursing out a bus driver who was misogynistic to her and her friends. But there are a couple others that have also been making the rounds on this press tour, so I'll play a couple of them now. Yeah. She's uh, so yes. funny and I'm very ageist, but like- You're very, ageist? I am actually. You don't like older people or- say that? Well, let me ask you this, I mean, am are you ageist towards me? No, no. Okay. No, no. Okay. Just curious. Okay. okay. You just what? Oh, what you, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Speed. Hey, boss. Today you'll be taking a bite to eat character quiz to find out which girl's character you actually are. Hell yeah. And so it's like one bisexual like girl myself. Um, if no one was aware, I never talk about it or bring it up. Um, so we're, we're this is breaking news. I can't believe it. Huge. Yeah. I'm excited for you to come out as bi. <laughs> yeah. I mean, by the end of the interview, let's see where it goes. It's, I mean, you're making a very good sales pitch. Ah! It's been like five years of my life now. Wow. Yeah, which seems like really odd and really strange. I'm just like, I would say like, I'm milking this IP <laughs> for jobs um, until I can't anymore, man. Now again, this brutal honesty is something that we don't see from women in Hollywood that often, and a lot of people on Twitter and on TikTok and social media are living for it. Because it doesn't seem put on, it seems very genuine, it seems like she's really like this in real life. But I feel like that type of brutal honesty is going to get her in trouble in one of two ways. Either she's going to say something that the masses online deem to be problematic, or her earnestness is going to eventually get perceived as the I'm not like other girls archetype and she's going to be made fun of for seeming quirky and like she's trying too hard to be different. Some examples of this that I can directly point to include, but are not limited to, people hating Jennifer Lawrence for liking pizza and falling at award shows, the random year and a half of unsolicited Anne Hathaway hate that still doesn't really have an explanation, 
TikTok getting mad at Rachel Zegler for stating that Snow White scared her when she was a kid, and that a Disney live-action remake is going to be slightly different than a cartoon that was made in 1937. Oh, the fucking humanity. And fans turning on Jenna Ortega for being outspoken about the fact that she didn't like some of the love triangle plot lines in Wednesday. To put it simply, it seems that people like when women in Hollywood are honest and outspoken about things until they don't. It seems to be this ever-present moving target where a celebrity has to try to appear relatable, but not so much so that they exceed the imaginary threshold and become cringe or problematic. Dare I say that this is in fact misogyny, and before people get on me for saying that, I do want to point out that there is in fact also a curse for the it boys of Hollywood, which usually involves a weird mix of infantilization and people being weird and creepy and sexual and violating boundaries. Jacob Elordi is most recently going through this right now. And to be clear, I'm not saying that you can't have a crush on your favorite male celebrity or something. I'm just saying, like, maybe don't harass their partners or speculate too deeply on their sexuality or get into their Twitter and Instagram messages and tell them that you want to their until the walls fucking like, maybe just keep that to yourself, or in your weird little freak group chat, or in your AO3 reading list. Ultimately, parasocial relationships between the internet and celebrities are here to stay. And it's not like I'm cheering for Renee Rapp's downfall or anything, I think she's very talented and I enjoy her presence in interviews and performances and whatnot. I'm just saying, I've seen this all play out before, I have a whole series on it. And in most situations, I feel like these young women who have found themselves thrust into the spotlight and suffer from overexposure need to be given more grace because at the end of the day, most of them signed up to be actresses or singers or even influencers and none of them signed up to be the perfect role model. That is all for me today, you guys. I promise you how the internet fell out of love with Ariana Grande is coming out next week. I'm just working on some sponsor stuff and some filming stuff, you know, monotonous business as one does. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about Renee Rapp, and while you're down there, also tell me your favorite candy. Mine is Reese's. See you later, bye! I put your man in a leash. I put your man in a leash. Cause all men are dogs. I'm kind of a bitch. Yeah, the boys all know. The boys all know. Can't say yeah.